Now I have to play this song uh, because uh, Oye had to take me down to the village uh, where she responded to that greeting where I say Adam <laughs> <laughs> You know she took me down to you know down to my village now and I say let me go to the village and bring yeah, out this song. Yeah, you understand? Okay. You and uh, you made me understand that this guy, you know, the artist mm -hmm. isn't from or wasn't from Enugu State. Oh yeah, actually. But he spoke he was. the dialect so mm -hmm. well. Very, very well. From Anambra State. Just like the way you did you know, uh, and you are doing you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> however it's sad to learn that he's no more oh it's very very sad yeah. very 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 sad well welcome to our program segment and today we are looking at a topic uh, that concerns uh, everyone uh, including male and female mm -hmm. measures to prevent breast cancer mm -hmm. and we have in the studio with us dr stella maris ifunanya who is a board member a media health foundation joining us this morning good morning to you doc good morning thank you and it's not the first time it's not the second time but it's my pleasure being here again definitely yeah. you're welcome so we know that breast cancer is a type of cancer that starts in the breast. It starts when cells begin to grow out of control. Breast cancer cells usually form a tumor that can often be seen on an x-ray or felt as a lump. It occurs almost entirely in women, but men can get breast cancer as well. Today on this show, we will be talking about measures of preventing breast cancer cancer we are aware of its existence but what can we do to see that we put a stop or that we prevent it like i said we have dr stella maris right here in the studio dr stella maris ifunanya anyamu a board member media health foundation good to have you here once again thank you okay so shall we start off sure you know. okay now um what is breast cancer in the first place let's start from the beginning then we know the causes well, you've answered it when she was introducing it. Okay. Cancer that starts from the breast. That is just what it is. As simple as it is. Okay. So what now, are the causes? The causes, you know, people always look at the causes, the causes, but we have what we call risk factors. Of course, cause of cancer is when the cell outgrow its usual boundary. That's what it is in the simplest term. So you have the cells and there's something we call normal apoptosis. That's the cells are undergoing normal death. It is very normal. But when these cells do not undergo the apoptosis and start growing, you know, more are growing, the ones that are supposed to shed off are still there. You have excess cells. That's how it starts. This is how you even talk about cause. But when you now think about risk factors, that are, these are things that can increase someone's risk of having breast cancer. Okay. So these are things I think we should be talking about. So what are the risk factors here now? The number one risk factor is being a woman. That's the number one because it's commoner in women. 99% of breast cancers occur in women. And the second risk factor is age. It is more common in women who are 40 years and above. Then you now have other risk factors like you have the genetic factors, you have the obesity, you have increased usage of alcohol, smoking, um, hormonal drugs, pills, and the rest. These are common risk factors. In fact, there are other risk factors that we tend to tell people about, like um, how much exposure the person gets to estrogen. Estrogen is a normal hormone in females. In fact, some men, you know, it's in men, but not as much as you have it yeah. in women. Now, estrogen is a hormone that plays an important role in what we call the pathogenesis. That's um, the growth or the genesis. Genesis, of course, you know, is growth. Patho has to do with diseased states. So the growth of the disease of breast cancer, estrogen has a lot to play starting from how much within the woman's life she's exposed to estrogen. For example, how early did she ha um, start having her menstruation and how late did she stop having it? Of course, these are not things that you should induce yourself or you can control yourself, but just like age, just like your gender, 
these are non-modifiable risk factors. So when we talk about things, I'll still explain it, things like increased breast, prolonged breastfeeding and some of those things, or stop using hormones just like that. It's because we understand that her increased exposure to estrogen increases the risk of having breast cancer. Okay, you said something that struck my fancy now. Yeah. Prolonged period of breastfeeding. Okay. Is that supposed to be an advantage or a disadvantage? Okay. I have to make sure you understand prolonged period first. Mm -hmm. Because when I mentioned it, prolonged period to some people could be, you know, the usual duration of menstrual flow for most people is four to five. So when you say prolonged period, the person may be talking about 10 days of menstrual flow two weeks of menstrual flow. But what I meant by prolonged period is, for example, the... Or breastfeeding. No, okay, it's not prolonged period that you were talking no, about. No, 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 yeah. breastfeeding. breastfeeding. Prolonged breastfeeding. Okay, prolonged breastfeeding. breastfeeding. Prevent, it plays a role in preventing. Okay. Because during lactation, that's breastfeeding, yes. we have what we call lactation hormone. That's prolactin. And it tends... Because prolactin is high, it has a suppression effect on the produ production of estrogen. So it's inversely proportional to estrogen. So if I tend to prolong for, uh, to breastfeed for a prolonged time, say six months to one year, mm -hmm. you find out that estrogen is kept at a minimal level for that period. At least one year, six months, one year, you're not having increased exposure to estrogen. Because as long as the menstrual cycle is going up, and the menstrual cycle is a period of... Um, different hormonal waves going up, going low. As long as menstrual cycle is there, estrogen will be coming up and going. So when it comes to menstruation, every month, at some point, estrogen goes high. Before it comes down, then the menstruation flows. The next month, it goes up, comes down, menstruation flows. If you know people who lactate, like once a woman finishes getting finished delivering, she doesn't start menstruating for most people, just that most people start at six weeks, three months, and the rest. Sometimes, if you're doing exclusive breastfeeding, you can find out that for six months, no menstruation, because the prolactin hormone, that's the lactation hormone, has suppressed estrogen that increases, that helps to build up for menstruation. Mm -hmm. So that's how prolonged breastfeeding helps to prevent breast cancer breast in cancer. terms of the risk factors we know. Okay, so could that be one of the reasons they advised our mothers in the past to breastfeed for almost up to three years? Because some mothers did that. One of the reasons, yes, almost three years. We usually talk about almost two years, but as from six months, you've started introducing other meals. Yes. What we encourage is the first six months, only breastfeeding. breastfeeding. That's what we encourage. You can breastfeed for up to six... Uh, up to two years, but you can introduce other meals starting mm -hmm. from six months. Okay. Okay. Now you talked about a prolonged uh, menstruation. Okay. Uh, let's look at it. Is it uh, on the advantage side or disadvantage side? So I was trying to correct the impression of what is prolonged menstruation. Yeah. What I meant when we are talking about menstruation is how long is the woman's exposure to estrogen? If a girl starts menstruating at eleven years. All through her life, 11 to 20 to 40, up to 55 years, she's still menstruating before she, now as a woman, attains menopause. Yes. You can find out that she had a long span of her life where she's exposed to estrogen because for every month for period to come out, estrogen must play its role. Compared to the lady who starts menstruating, say, at about 17 years and stops menstruating at about 40, the exposure is reduced because from that 17 to 40 is a shorter duration. So that's what we meant by um, prolonged exposure to estrogen secondary to menstruation. But the fact remains that this is not modifiable. It's not something you should go to induce control. Unlike alcohol, physical activity, obesity, that you can say you have the power to control. Okay. Yeah. So is breast cancer hereditary? Hereditary. Um, you know, there are things we try to put up. There is these gene genes that are related to breast cancer. You have what we call BRCA1, BRCA, BRCA1, BRCA2, and uh, PALB. These are the three genes associated with breast cancer. For most people, it is, you know, following the family history, 
mothers or if someone in your could be first generation, not actually your mother. There, of course, you know how we have this transmission of factors of genes. For most people, because of that gene, there could be some level of increased risk factor because you saw this. Where we have that classical case, if you know the popular actress Angelina Jolie. Her grandmother, her mother, they had positive BRCA1 and 2 early. So she, very early in life, had to remove her breasts as a preventive um, uh, as a preventive method to help her. That's the fact. So you can't say, yes, it's purely transmissible or hereditary, but there is the possibility of these genes trans going from the first generation to the rest. Now, what can um, someone do uh, for being a woman? You know, you say one of uh, the causes one is for faster. being uh, one of the risk factors is to, uh, for being a woman. Now that one has been created to be a woman, mm -hmm. what can one do? You know, are there signs uh, that one will start uh, feeling or noticing and the person will know that uh, this is uh, a danger sign or um, are there things people could do even if you don't get any sign or symptom are there things people could do absolutely okay let's get to that one we start with um, your lifestyle first is the optimal lifestyle that we always talk about we don't want obesity because obesity is a major killer, is a major prompt to many illnesses, not just breast cancer. So we want you to live, take appropriate diet, um, nutrition, adequate nutrition, increase physical activity, reduce to zero level of alcohol intake, absolute elimination. Zero. This one is not a reduction. Zero use of any tobacco products. For just being a woman or for women who are prone. For just that? being a woman, for in fact, these ones are even for both genders, not just okay. being a woman. These are mm. things we always advise when it comes to lifestyle modification. No alcohol intake at all. Mm -mm. Reduce alcohol intake. Okay. Reduce. Zero tobacco usage. Okay. Zero. Zero tobacco Zero. usage. Yeah. Okay. That's what we put it. So these are the first one. The lifestyle modifiers, things you must do. That's why I call this one modifiable risk factors because you have control over them. Then the second thing is breast examination, self-breast examination. On your own, women should learn how to palpate. In fact, I advise women it's best to palpate when you are bathing. Because with the water and soap, you find out that the sleep friction is reduced. So you can actually have a better palpation and feeling of if there is any lump. That way you get used to knowing what is normal in your body if you at least do it every month. So that once you spot any abnormality, you know this is out of usual and you should present to the hospital as, as soon as possible. That's number one. And that's where people come in with the fact of... um. Sucking breast prevents cancer. Well, I used to put it this way. We have adult babies and baby babies. So how true is that? Thing? Yes, I'm trying to explain it now. Baby babies, which you understand as the babies we already know. No, the who, prevention who are the, who are the who, babies? Who are the babies? Like, Zero uh, months, uh, one month, uh, two months. Uh, there there are adult babies. So the tatas, yeah. The tatas have explained how they have by prolonged breastfeeding. Mm. I've explained that. Now, adult babies mm. generally will not prevent, but they will help in detection. Because as the adult babies are sucking, if they are sensitive enough, they may know that ah, this is out of normal. I am feeling something that should not be there. Okay. So you wouldn't say that is the sucking of the adult baby that prevents it because of the just like the tatas because mm. of the hormone. Okay. What prevent? What is helpful is the detection. So I always put it to people when I'm explaining that baby babies prevent via the hormonal effect of breastfeeding. Why adult babies yes. detect? if okay. they are sensitive enough. Okay. So you wouldn't say that is that sucking that does it. Now, I'm still coming down. We've done about self-breast examination. And the next one, aside the self-breast examination, is mammography, especially for elderly, elderly women from 50 years to 70 years. Mm -hmm. This is usually done at three years interval. If, if you do it now and there is no problem, th next three years you repeat oh, yeah. up until 70 years. Okay. We don't usually put it up for um, the reproductive years of um, of a woman mm. 15 to 45 years except when necessary probably we are now beginning to have symptoms so we go from those not from those modifiable risk factors to the self breast examination mm. and then the mammography
Okay. Well, uh, well, uh, let me not give uh, uh, this uh, baby babies. Uh, we need to go to the dictionary <laughs> to find the meaning of that. You know? I I, they are just laughing at me. I you, don't know. You belong to the that... adult babies. We know who no, the baby this... babies are. Big brother, we will open up this line. Let's not dwell on this. I know where you want to go to. 0810-913-9902. That's the number to call. 0810-913-9902. Definitely, it's important that everybody participates because if you are not a woman, you have a woman as your mother. You have a woman as your wife. You also have grown-up girls as your daughters. And a so, sister. sisters. And, and too. sisters and as sisters. well. So it, uh, it's uh, something that... All of us must actually um, uh, participate and uh, get to know about some of these things in order to help our family members. You know, cancer was not actually prevalent in this part of the country in the past. But in recent time, uh, we noticed that um, there is this increased cases of cancer in the African continent, you know, especially in Nigeria. Why is it so? I usually attribute it to two major reasons. The first one is um, change in lifestyle stroke, environmental exposures. And then the second one is increased awareness and detection. Um, I wouldn't want to deter from what we are speaking, but let me use it as an example, totally outside this. We would usually say that rape is not common until recently. But the truth is, rape was existing. Mm. It's just that people are speaking out more that we got to know that rape was there. Okay. So that's the case in this one. People are learning how to do self-breast examination mm -hmm. and knowing that ah, this is not normal though. hospital mm. because of increased awareness. And as we are speaking it now, people in the remote areas may be listening. Even people who are not there may listen and take it home to their loved ones in the remote areas. This is Christmas approaching. Mm -hmm. So the awareness is increasing and someone can come to you confidently. I'm seeing, I'm noticing something like this you said. That's one. Then the other one, of course, lifestyle stroke, environmental factors, like I mentioned about the obesity, alcohol, and the tobacco usage. So okay. these are the two major reasons. Okay, um, Doc, for women, I think it's a lot easier for them to detect it when they have such around or on their breast what about men how can they detect such because 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 men do not have most of the you know the lobo tissues the breast tissues what men should do you like even for any part of your body you know what is normal so once you notice anything that is not normal probably the nipples start retracting or you just have an ulceration or a change in the skin of the look of the skin the texture once you notice anything out of normal, it doesn't have to be lump. You okay. start making, taking an action straight to the hospital for further Do they also go for mammogram? Do men run mammogram Not routinely. Okay. It's just if need be, like the case I explained. Of course, for women, that's where we have the 99% cases. So if a man is having a breast symptom that is like that, we may need to send for mammography to be sure. Otherwise, we take biopsy. Most cases is to take biopsy is a test we do where we take a part of the tissue and examine it to see if it's cancerous or not. Or not. So that's the situation. We are going to take just about one call because of time at 0810913992. And uh, if you are going to call us, you call us now. And now, what uh, remedies do we have for this? If eventually one find himself or herself on this, what are the remedies? Like I always tell people, breast cancer is curable. It's curable? Yes. The major factor is early detection. And that's why we keep preaching about examination, self-breast examination and mammography. Okay, let's take this one call. And uh, hello. Hello, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Please make it in 30 seconds. Okay, I don't have a question. My question is, is there any space where the cancer will live that it becomes incurable if there are in such a state? What next should the person do? So okay. The person is due to get to next year if it is allowed, even though it's not legal here in Nigeria. But I think that is the nature of the state is for instance, when it has reached a state of incurable okay. illness. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. We have less than one minute to conclude. Um, Doc, 
Can you do it in 30 seconds now? Yes, I can. You know, when we talk about early detection, it's because we understand that there are advanced stages of cancer, and that is what we call metastasis. By then, it has just left beyond the breast tissue, off to other tissues like the lung, liver, and the rest. And that is why we call for early detection. When it metastasizes, that's the cancer cells, what we do is to something like do your best and improve the life of the person for as much as the person has. So when it gets to those advanced stages, we do what we could do, surgery and the chemotherapy and then supportive treatments. Thank you very much. And that's the much we can take because of time, Dr. Ifonaya Stella Maris. And now well, thank you very much for coming to our studio. You're welcome. We looked at measures to prevent uh, breast cancer today on the program, and uh, she has uh, been so uh, so helpful. Please, we are going to revisit this particular topic. It's very important. Yes, I very, actually very. feel, I have a strong feeling that we have not really exerted all that we should be talking about on this. Okay. So we once we send out the invite, please oblige us once again. All right. Thank you very much. A big thank you to the producer, Mao Konkwa, of course, the supervisor, Joy Obitulata, the executive producer, uh, Pastor Emmanuel in I'm the Zono director himself. Thank you very much for waking up with us as well. My name is Ike Chuku. And Eden. I'm Onyinye Onovo. Thank you very much and have a splendid weekend. I will give you this kind of program. Let's not trouble it. You can use your phone.